That's really good. Yeah. Like ridiculously good. <laughs> we have good food. Good food, good people and good beer. What's going on people? Liam Loftus here and we are on a mission to visit four different football clubs in four different European countries. From the food, this is a bad boy sandwich, to the songs, Richard. yes, and everything in between. We want to know what it's really like to be a football fan on the continent. The last leg of our journey. Oh, I've got all my bags. Next up, Porto. Another night under the lights. Champions League football is back, baby. FC Porto into Milan is going to be absolutely massive. But before that, let's go meet our mega fan, Francisco. Let's talk your love story of Porto. When, when did it begin? The day I was born, my grandfather took a picture of me. He went to the old stadium and he made me an associate. And so I'm a Porto fan since I'm born 27 years ago. The family love for Porto is a generational, your dad, your granddad, yeah. like on and on. It's funny you mention my dad because my dad, he wasn't a Porto fan. And when he decided to marry my mom, my grandfather had only one condition. He, he had to be a Porto fan as well. Now he's probably the biggest fan, the one that suffered the most with the matches. So <laughs> obviously with big love, I know comes high expectations for Porto yeah. fans. We can win like all the cups. But if we don't win the Champions League or the, the league, for us, it's, uh, it's a bad season. Not uh, worth getting out of bed for if it's not the Champions League no, or the league. No, no, we're not going to go outside and party for just some cup or some league cup or no. That's, that's mandatory. What should I expect? What are Porto fans like? They're going to sing for the 90 minutes. <laughs> All the stadium just cheering and clapping and making noise and booing the ref when he's making bad decisions. <laughs> Is it just a hot dog? You just call it a hot dog? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crunchy bread and then it's cheese and like a spicy sausage. I was watching it, they were doing it like we'd say in England, like a toasty. Mm. It's quite spicy, but good. This might be the perfect free football food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's the way to go. You know what, I could give this a 10. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, it could get a 10. Obrigado. Francisco, you're still in my heart. Another sandwich, more chips. We have inside this more cheese, different types of meat. The special thing about the Francisinha is not it's the right. sauce. It's not just tomato soup. No, no, no. There's wine, there's beer, there's scotch, there's shrimp, there's meat, and then lots of more things that I have no idea what's inside. Look at the layers. You've got the egg, you've got the bread, four meats in there, cheese as well, and the bottom bread. This almost reminds you of something you'd have after Christmas, you know, with like all your leftovers. How do I say it? Francisinha. 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 Perfect. For me, the Francisinha, nine. This? It's a bad boy sandwich, trust me. Where is this place, man? I mean, outside you're walking and it's a regular street, regular walls, and we're inside and it's FC Porto mad. So this is like a basement of an house. Mm. That's a typical, like, old school bar. Let's talk cult heroes. Who really stands out for you? Well, our actual coach, like mm. right now, Sergio Conceição, it's uh, an ancient player. He was known for being like real fierce. Now he's doing the exactly same thing with as being a coach. I mean, for a lot of people, they see Porto and it's Mourinho win the Champions League. Yeah, I was young, but I remember it like easily. It was against Monaco. We won 3 0. Mourinho was like a crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy coach. Like, you know, very well from England. For us, Porto fans, it's, we just say thank you to him because yeah. he made us win something amazing. Porto is sort of the last club to win the Champions League that isn't like a super club. We cannot put it by words how proud when you see like all the champions and you see like Bayern, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool and all and then you see Porto there. Right, shall we finish these and go over to the stadium? Yeah, yeah. but before oh, you have to get some man. merch because going to the stadium without the merch is like... I'll be like a sore thumb, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at the ground, there's people everywhere. I mean, 
This is crazy stuff. I need to learn a song, bro. I'll teach you like uh, the song that I hope that we're gonna sing it like multiple times today. That after we score a goal, Oh, oh Magico Porto, Porto, graças a Deus não nasci lampião. Porto, meu grande amor, eu dou a vida para seres campeão. Ale, ale. Which means like, uh, Porto, you're magic, you're my love. I'll give my life so you'll be a champion. Right, that's good. <laughs> Let's get to the game, man, because the queues are building yeah. and I don't want to miss kickoff. Let's do yeah, this. Let's Come go, on, bro. Let's, let's go. go. Inter Milan go through. That's tough to take, yeah? Yeah. Especially when you see like a big team as Inter Milan didn't want to play and just waste time. Let's talk Porto fans, though. Didn't stop singing. I mean, they waited 10 minutes after the game to applaud the players. Yeah. We sang for 90 minutes, as I promised. Francisco, thank you very much for having me. My pleasure, man. It's been an absolute honour to get to know your club, to get to know your city. There we have it, my people. Finito, Amsterdam, Munich, Bilbao, Porto. We've taken every method of transport possible. Highlights for me, eating hot dogs in Porto and singing with the ultras in Bilbao. Now, if you're looking to expand your football horizons, get yourself on the continent and get yourself to some matches. Unbelievable stuff.